Gemini, and welcome to your bi-weekly love reading from February 1st through the 15th, 2018. I hope you guys are all doing well, and I want to wish you all a happy Valentine's Day if you celebrate, and in general, just lots of love to all of you. For your reading today, I am using the Lover's Path Tarot by Chris Walder. I will be clarifying with the Everyday Oracle, also known as the Vera Sibilla Italiana, my little Italian Oracle cards. They're so cute. And at the end of your reading, I'll be pulling a beautiful guidance message from the Rumi Oracle by Alana Fairchild. If that sounds good, let us not waste time and get started with your reading. Thank you. Gemini, this is your bi-weekly reading, and this reading is for all Gemini suns, Gemini moons, Gemini risings, Gemini's on the cusp, and also if you have a Venus in Gemini. Let's go ahead and start shuffling the cards here. And I just want to let you know I am recovering from a cold, so I apologize if my voice is not great and I may be coughing. <coughs> Spirit, what are the most important messages and energies that you have for the Sun of Gemini? This is their bi-weekly love reading from February 1st through the 15th, 2018. What are the most important messages and energies that you have for the Sun of Gemini? All Geminis out there that may be watching... Gemini Sun, Gemini Moon, Gemini Rising, Gemini on the Cusp, and Venus, Gemini. What do they need to know regarding their love lives from February 1st through the 15th, 2018? Okay, one more shuffle here, and then I'm going to be cutting the deck. Okay, very nice. At the bottom of the deck, I have the Eight of Cups. Right. So, <coughs> this is about, uh, as we see, actually, uh, the card imagery here is a bit different than the traditional Rider Waite deck where we see the man walking away. Um, I feel like someone here is asking for, it's almost like she's saying, are you okay? Like, what's wrong? I feel like if you are in a relationship with someone, Gemini, you, I definitely see someone who you're potentially interested. The question is, are you the female in this picture or are you the male in this picture? Um, not just gender-wise, but in terms of the interaction here. Um, someone is asking, are you okay? And this person is like, no, they're playing dead in the relationship. Or they're just done and, you know, it's it's over, but they haven't walked away yet. In this deck, I'm reading it like something is missing, something is, is wrong, um, and you're trying to figure out what is wrong. Um, perhaps even it is the other person, maybe it's the other way around, where you're the one here laying down. With your arms crossed over your chest, just like uh, something is not right here, and your partner is trying to implore you, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's going on? But there seems to be something amiss, okay, something not quite right, something maybe has disappointed you, you feel like this isn't working, you know? That's kind of the feeling that I'm getting looking at that card. So you have the seven of staves in reverse in your current situation crossed by the seven of arrows. Two sevens, okay. Uh, what comes below you, we have a ten of arrows. And your thoughts and feelings 
You have the King of Coin in reverse. In your recent past, you have the Three of Staves. <clears throat> so these up here. I have a, my altar cloth is a little bit finicky, so give me a moment. Yeah, in the past, you have the Three of Staves. In the near future, you have the King of Arrows. Okay. That could potentially be your energy coming up very strong in the future. <coughs> Excuse me. So we will be clarifying some of these cards. Not all of them because of time. I wanted to see what's under the Eight of Cups. Yeah, you have the Four of Staves. So I already see some kind of a union here, a partnership. Maybe you live with your significant other. Maybe you have already moved in with this person. Um, there was definitely some kind of formal arrangement here. I am seeing a homecoming, but I feel that something has happened. Something has happened and one of you is no longer communicating, has felt, is feeling emotionally dead in the relationship. Something is not right. So we walk into February and you have the seven of staves in reverse. Let me look at the card here. So we have a man who's kind of fighting off this fire breathing dragon. And when it's reversed, it's kind of saying, like, you don't feel like maybe defending yourself anymore. Maybe you stop speaking up for yourself. Um, it could be that you're backing down from someone who is being very defensive to you. Um, you could have a lot of people throwing stuff at you and you're just, you don't want to put up the fight anymore. This is about backing away from conflict. Um, sevens are about conflict and challenges, so it's kind of saying that you maybe aren't speaking up anymore, you may not feel like defending yourself, you may be backing down too easily when faced with conflict. Obviously there's a reason for that because in your challenge position you have the seven of arrows in reverse. Right. So this is similar to the seven of swords. Um, I feel that someone has got caught doing something. Uh, there's guilt here and possibly regret. Uh, usually this is about getting caught doing something red-handed. Um, let's see. It's interesting because in both of these cards we see a man lying down here and in sort of the same position, arms folded across the chest and kind of like a uh, defensive position, but also I'm seeing someone here who is literally just dead. They're, they they feel like they just, they're not moving. Maybe they're sick. Maybe they just are, <clears throat> it's kind of like closing themselves off from the rest of the world. So it could be that the challenge here is to Kind of figure out what this game is, what is going on here, to catch this person in their, their act, and to leave. To leave it all behind. Um, I'm also feeling like, because we have two sevens here, we're definitely dealing with divine timing. We're definitely dealing with, um, you know, it's a very spiritual number. Seven days, seven weeks, seven months. This could have been going on for a very long time. And maybe you're just at a point where you're you're like, I don't want to defend myself anymore. I'm just tired. I'm just, this is done. I'm laying this to rest. Because at the root of the situation, you have the Ten of Arrows, which is about stick and a stick of fork and it. it's done. You know, this is the ultimate betrayal, the ultimate heartbreak, the ultimate ending. It can also say that the body is tired. You know, that this can be... Due to health issues, we will have to clarify it, but it's definitely saying that there, there has been an ending here and you don't want to push your luck anymore. You don't want to fight. You don't want to even stand up for yourself anymore. You're just tired. <coughs> I see in the past with the Three of Staves that you were setting your course, setting out, possibly waiting for maybe some communication. Um, but this is more goal-directed energy. It's about planning. I mean, I feel like um, this is this person's already into negotiations. They, they already know what they want with the Three of Staves. 
There's, by the way, there's a lot of fire energy here. Some of you could be could have Leo in your chart, Leo Aries Sagittarius. But in the past, I feel like this is a card of growth uh, and progress. It's about planning, making long-term plans. Some of you were in a long-term relationship, um, three months, three years, uh, three weeks, etc. But I want to consider three weeks to be a long-term relationship. But, you know, you were um, setting your course, setting out. Uh, you're, like, determining where you wanted to go next. But it feels like something happened here and you're just done. You just were like, this is over, this is done, I'm not doing this anymore. And um, I feel like someone does feel guilt, someone does feel regret. They got caught doing something they weren't supposed to be doing. And, uh, you know, you, you just are, you don't want to maybe defend this person anymore, stand up for them, fight for the relationship, whatever. It's like, it's over. In your thoughts and feelings, you have the King of Coins in reverse. So you're thinking about maybe a Virgo Taurus or Capricorn man. Now this King of Coins, when he's reversed, he's materialistic, he's greedy, he's two-timing, he's a cheater. Um, what more can I say? He is unfaithful and doesn't know what he wants. He can be lethargic, stubborn, unwilling to kind of change position. Um, also someone who can be very possessive and jealous. And I'm, I'm thinking that this is someone that has, um, feels snubbed, feels like they, they've been wronged. Um, they might not see it from your point of view. Uh, likely this could be your ex-partner, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, etc. I am getting of the earth suit. All right. So likely a Taurus or a Capricorn, possibly even a Virgo. Going into the future, I do see the King of Arrows here, and I feel like this is your energy, looking back on everything and being very strong in your power. Um, the King of Arrows can be very cold, distant, and aloof, but he is ruled by logic and wisdom and does everything by the book. So I feel like you're going to be communicating <coughs> with uh, that kind of reasoning. You... Um, I just, you just care about the truth at this point and you just click care about communicating your vision. Um, I don't, I feel like with, with the arrow raised here, you aren't, um, going to be accepting many offers. You probably won't be letting many people in. You just have a lot of self-respect is what I'm seeing. Um, and I think that you could be potentially reflecting on what has happened in the past and definitely coming out a stronger person after this. But I do see someone walking away in the end here, and, um, you know, it's kind of like that thing, it's kind of like lesson learned type of situation. Uh, so I, the first thing I want to do is I want to clarify the Ten of Arrows in the root position. How are we doing on time? Twelve minutes. Good. Why is the Ten of Arrows in the root position for Gemini? Yeah, we have the Eladro, the thief. So this is someone, it says lost goods, robbery, fraud. Someone has done something fraudulent. Maybe they have stolen from you. Maybe they stole your heart. Um, someone here has, like there's a man coming in through the window here. It says thief. So someone has literally done something uh, scandalous here that they were not supposed to be doing. They have taken something from you. They have robbed you of something. Um, hopefully this is not your energy, but, you know, <clears throat> you'll know it. <clears throat> you'll know it when you see it, right? Why is the Ten of Arrows in the foundation of Gemini's reading? We have the Fidelta and the Balvedere. So this is, I see someone here who is very loyal and devoted, looking straight at this thief. As if to say, I was being loyal to you, you have not been loyal to me. And I feel like with the Belvedere, it's like you're turning your attention to something better. You have great ambitions, you have farsightedness, you now have your eye on something else here. Okay, so, um, 
I'm seeing someone who is loyal. I'm seeing someone looking who's loyal looking at someone who is not loyal. And I see that there is now turning your attention to something better, greater. Okay. Um, let's see who this King of Coins in reverse is. Who is this King of Coins in reverse? In Gemini's thoughts and feelings. He's coming up as Zeus. Obviously, the king of the gods. So, someone that has a lot of power, a lot of respect, or had a lot of respect, commanded a lot of um, power and respect. <clears throat> Why is the king of coins coming up reverse? Okay. <sighs> we have here the... Misfortune, the home, and the reunion. So, um, I'm seeing associated with this King of Coins in reverse um, a very serious and destructive event, similar to a tower situation. All right. I also feel like this is someone that you is maybe the center of your home life um, because the home represents the cusp represents family stability and traditionalism. This is definitely. Uh, someone that you could be in a relationship with or share a home with. Um, I'm seeing someone like as a pillar, like a pillar, or even this is like a bank. So someone that commands that kind of power and presence in your life. In the future, we have the romantic encounter job offer reunion. So it's very possible that this is someone who could try to come back. Um, I am seeing romantic uh, uh, involvement here. Uh, you may be thinking about reuniting with this person or um, this person has tried to come back and uh, reunite with you after some, some serious event has happened here. <coughs> right. So why is the King of Arrows coming up in the future in Gemini's reading? Why is the King of Arrows coming up in the future? We have the Vecchia Signora. So it says old woman, but we have a mother, aunt, grandmother, or an old acquaintance here. Also, the old woman can just be someone who is very wise and knows their place in the world, knows what they want. They're not... Um, they are kind of settling down into who they are. They they don't really, it's not like someone that needs attention or validation. They, like I said, they've grown into their position. So the King of Arrows could be any of these things. Um, I'm seeing someone who's very wise and the way that he's postured here and looking with the flowers and the arrow, it's kind of like, I see this for what this is kind of thing. All right, I'm, I'm looking back and I'm, I'm, I've, I see what's really going on here. Why is the King of Arrows coming up in the future in Gemini's reading? We have the maid, help housework errand. Um, this can be someone who you can have someone here that is. Uh, a friend to you, someone that is willing to do things for you, but at the same time, I see that she's wearing the same costume here, so I just feel like it's kind of more you going about your business on a day-to-day -day level and just getting things done. Why is the... and that's what you're focused on, really, is just going about your business. <laughs> Ooh. And then we have the enemy, the woman who acts secretly. Again, I'm seeing this as the same person, um, the Queen of Spades, right? So I feel like uh, <clears throat> with the cloak and dagger here, um, it's highly possible that um, you may be going back into kind of, um, you may feel like maybe you were this person's lover at one point, but now you are their enemy. That's kind of the feeling that I'm getting. Um, but something could be turning you more into a jaded position here. Um, 
it's also highly possible that you have an enemy in your miss, um, in which case it could be another female. And this could be someone that, uh, I'm not reading it like this, like this because I'm actually seeing the same clothing all around here. I'm just seeing that you're taking on a different role. And just be careful because I do feel like now you are the enemy. <clears throat> now you have made yourself uh, someone who is formidable. All right, in a relationship, possibly you're out for revenge. That's also the, sort of the feeling that I'm getting. It's like you've now put the cloak and dagger on and you're now out to get revenge. Um, because as you look back on the situation, you realize someone has got caught doing something and you, um, I do feel like someone has just, um, is, uh, is playing possum and you're like, uh, do you want to communicate with me about this? Like what's going on? And you realize now that they, um, they were sneaking around and they were being unfaithful to you. You were being faithful to them. And now you're ready to set your sights on something far greater than this person. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> All right, Gemini. Um, I am going to pull your Oracle message, your guidance message. We're at the 20 minute mark. So I don't want to go too much over. And <clears throat> Spirit, what is the message that you have for Gemini? with regards to their love lives from February 1st to the 15th, 2018. You have passion for purpose. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so I am gonna be reading from the Rumi Oracle Handbook. If you wanna follow along, this message is actually available online. You just need to Google the name of the card <clears throat> which is passion for Pur perfect pa passion for purpose number two Rumi Oracle and you might be able to find that um, find that uh, card online and follow along with me uh, text wise so um, yeah I just love the colors here I love the whole energy let's see so there's a gonna be a poem at the beginning and I really do recommend sticking around for this message as it does clarify the entire reading. Always has, always will. And um, it's going to be a bit of an extended message here, so uh, five to ten minutes. <clears throat> Passion for purpose. Love like life flows through the heart. Feel the thrill of the flow and say nothing. Rumi. Do you yearn to find your way? To fulfill your divine destiny, to know the purpose for your presence within the sacred body of the Earth Mother. Your heart is questing for deeper meaning. It desires certainty as to your sacred tasks for this lifetime. Your heart wants to know why you are born. For what purpose? You must know that the answer to these questions is love. I bring you your answer, straight from the heart of the universe. Be wild within your passion. Do that which stirs your soul, even when it makes you uncomfortable, especially then. For what is being truly alive if not a decision to be open instead of resistant? To be wild rather than comfortable, so that at any moment we will be ready for the invitation of the Divine Beloved to come closer. <coughs> Excuse me. I call to you now, the you that is beyond your mind. The you that the heart knows, the you that cannot deny life. To that you, I ask this question. What stirs the passions of your nature? Do that. Be that. As we grow on the spiritual path, so too does our ability to serve life, to serve love, to honor humanity, and to offer a contribution that is unique to us, that could only flow in this particular way through the quality of our own soul light. Every light holds its own beauty, and every light has a particular task to fulfill on the divine path of life. <clears throat> to help us remember this, lest we get too easily distracted by the pain and stress that happens in life, we were given an inbuilt reminder. That reminder is our passion. We may think that passion is not particularly practical. We may 
may feel fearful that with passion there are no guarantees of success, or that we may even be throwing away a stable and secure life to pursue our passion. These are the fears of many a modern society, yet they are so misplaced. Life supports all beings based on their true nature. The birds are given air in which to fly, and fish are given water in which to swim. Plants are given light of the open plains or darkness of the damp rain rainforest, depending on their needs for growth. Different flowers flourish in different environments. These have wings that are very small but powerful enough to move with such speed and rotation that their heavy bodies can fly. Each aspect of creation is given what is required so it may become what it is meant to be, for its unique destiny to be fulfilled. So it is with humanity. Each one of us has something in our hearts that means something to us. It is irrelevant whether it seems practical or a recipe for success or not. We are simply meant to be what we are, to serve life faithfully from a place of honoring the truth of our nature that which we genuinely feel passionate about, and to allow for life to naturally support growth according to our genuine nature. Where we get into difficulty is not in bringing our genuine passions to life, for life supports this, but in learning to let go of attachment as to how that happens. We can struggle to free ourselves of the expectation we have to be something we are not. The divine path of love asks us to become conscious of and then unlearn the play acting of attempting to be a false self so that we may learn to simply love and accept our real self. We may even have a struggle on our hands to remember who our real self actually is for a time. Fortunately, there is pleasure in the journey of returning to passion that can make the process of self-discovery a sweet one. But we must be brave even in the sweetness of that journey back to the real self. We must dare to believe that we are not broken, that we are not inadequate or better off to be like some other person or some other person's view of how they think we should be. We must be brave enough not to believe in the layers of guilt and shame. We must be bold enough not to fear our passion. As we dive deep within and explore what really makes us tick, what makes us feel alive, we must be open, curious, and non-judgmental. That may be a subtle journey at first. We may feel as though we are looking in the dark, wondering if we will ever catch a glimpse of the light of passionate meaning we hope to find. That passionate purpose may at first be barely recognizable amongst all the should, cannot, or must do of our lives. As we stay true to the path, however, that light will become unmistakably clear. Our passion will reveal itself to us as essential as our breath. We would feel as though we were not alive without it. How could we have missed it all those years, perhaps all those lifetimes? It will seem so obvious then, burning so clear in our hearts that it cannot be more obvious, that we simply must live this desire, this passion, this purpose, or else spiritually perish into a shriveled up shell of a person denying of life itself. No, that shall not be. Passion must and shall prevail. <clears throat> so this oracle comes to you with guidance, Gemini. You are being initiated more deeply into your life purpose. Your passion will reveal itself to you with more depth, nuance, and beauty than ever before. If parts of your life are dissembling or do not seem to be working out as you had planned, these are symptoms of this passionate revelation. Be curious and open to what presents itself in the wake of the falling away. Be ready for the journey within now. You are strong enough to leave behind the need for external validation whilst you learn to validate yourself. In time, soon enough in fact, you shall reveal your innermost beauty and be witnessed and received, acknowledged for your innate value, purpose, and divinity. But for now, sweet beloved, dive deep, be defiant, and determined to honor your heart so your deep passion may be witnessed by you and eventually, naturally, make its way into sacred expression in the world. If you have recently discovered a new talent or purpose or have been dreaming some big dreams, 
This oracle comes to you with guidance and confirmation. You are excited. Follow that excitement. Let it lead you into your own heart truth and onto an ever more passionate path of purposeful living. Sacred Honoring Ritual. Sit with one hand at your belly and one hand at your heart. Say the following aloud. Rumi, who loves me unconditionally, brother of my soul, guardian of my heart, help me witness, receive, and express the divine depths of my passionate purpose. With merciful grace, help me know my life purpose and fulfill my unique destiny, my unique divine destiny this lifetime. May I be gifted with the ability to consciously recognize <coughs> the guiding hand of love on my journey. Excuse me that I may serve that same hand through passionate and purposeful existence, surrendered into the greater passionate purpose of the universal heart. So be it. Say quietly and imagine or intend that energy from the universal... <coughs> <coughs> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Say quietly and imagine or intend that energy from the universal heart of love is flowing in through the back of your heart now and circulating between your belly and your heart. Any excess or old energy flows out through the back of your heart as the beautiful energy of love streams into your being. Stay with this gentle process for as long as feels right for you. You may feel emotion, sexual energy, or nothing much at all. Whatever happens or doesn't hap does not appear to happen is perfect for you at this time. So trust let it be. This concludes your reading, Gemini, and I thank you so much for watching, and I do wish you all a very, very wonderful first half of February, and I'll see you back at the mid-month. Take care.